What if I told you that one of the most jaw-dropping aerial maneuvers, a move that seems to defy the laws of physics, wasn't invented in the 21st century? What if it was first performed, accidentally, by a fighter jet born in the 1,950 seconds? A jet from a nation famous for its neutrality, yet responsible for creating some of the most formidable military hardware in history. This isn't a modern stealth fighter we're talking about. This is the story of an aircraft that looked like it flew straight out of science fiction. A machine that could dance on the edge of a stall and strike with the ferocity of its namesake. This is the story of the Saab 35 Draken, the Swedish Dragon. In today's episode, we're diving deep into the history of this Cold War icon. Why was it so revolutionary? How did its radical design give Sweden a critical edge in the tense skies over Europe? And how does this vintage warrior stack up against its legendary rivals? The Draken is more than just a beautiful piece of engineering. It's a testament to a nation's will to defend its sovereignty against the world's superpowers, proving that you don't need to be the biggest to be one of the best. Stick around as we unleash the Draken. To understand the birth of the Draken, we have to go back to the late 1,940 seconds. The world had just emerged from the embers of World War II, and a new, colder conflict was beginning to cast a long shadow. For Sweden, officially neutral but geographically caught between the ambitions of NATO and the Warsaw Pact, the situation was precarious. The primary threat was clear. High altitude, high-speed bombers capable of carrying nuclear payloads, Sweden's existing fleet of first-generation jets, like the Saab 29 Tunan, was rapidly becoming obsolete. They needed a game-changer. The Swedish Air Force issued a daunting set of requirements in 1949. They needed an interceptor that could climb to 10,000 meters, that's over 32,000 feet, in just a few minutes. It had to be capable of speeds exceeding Mach 1.5, operate from reinforced public roads as makeshift runways, and be refueled and rearmed by a small crew of conscripts in under 10 minutes. This was an incredibly tall order for the technology of the day. Saab's engineers, led by the brilliant Eric Bratt, knew a conventional design wouldn't cut it. They needed to think outside the box. The answer came in a shape that would define the aircraft, the double delta wing. This radical concept, tested on the miniature Saab 210 prototype, promised both the blistering speed needed for interception and the low speed stability required for Sweden's unique operational needs. The Dragon was beginning to take shape. The heart of the Draken's genius lies in its stunningly unconventional design. Look at it. It's a masterpiece of aeronautical engineering. The double delta wing wasn't just for show. It was a brilliant solution to a complex problem. The inner, wider delta, with its sharp 80-degree sweep, was optimized for supersonic flight, cutting through the air with minimal drag. The outer delta, swept at a gentler 60 degrees, provided excellent lift and control at lower speeds during takeoff and landing. This blend gave the Draken a versatility that few of its contemporaries could match. It could scream through the stratosphere at Mach 2, but also handle gracefully on a short, improvised runway. This design was so effective, it essentially created what we now call a blended wing body, where the fuselage and wings flow into one seamless shape. This reduced drag and increased internal volume for fuel and equipment. Another innovation was its use of an early form of infrared search and track, IRST sensor. While other fighters relied solely on radar, which could be detected and jammed, the Draken could passively hunt for the heat signature of an enemy bomber's engines, allowing for a stealthier approach. It was also one of the first aircraft to perform the now famous Cobra Maneuver, a super stall technique that allows the pilot to abruptly pitch the nose up to a high angle of attack, rapidly decelerating and allowing a pursuing enemy to overshoot. For the 1,950 seconds, this wasn't just advanced. 
it was revolutionary. Let's talk numbers, because the Draken's performance statistics are just as impressive as its design. The J35 Farad's model, one of the most common variants, measured 15.35 meters, or 50 feet 4 inches, in length. Its distinctive wingspan was 9.42 meters, or 30 feet 10 inches. Standing on the tarmac, it had a height of 3.89 meters, or 12 feet 9 inches. Empty. The aircraft weighed around 7,865 kilograms, 17,340 pounds, but its maximum takeoff weight could reach up to 16,000 kilograms, 35,273 pounds, fully loaded with fuel and ordnance. Powering this beast was a single Volvo Flig Motor RM6C, a Swedish built version of the legendary Rolls Royce. Avon 300 series turbojet. This powerhouse generated over 17,600 pounds of thrust with its afterburner engaged, rocketing the Draken to a top speed of over Mach 2, more than twice the speed of sound, or over 2,100 kilometers per hour at altitude. Its operational range was an impressive 3,250 kilometers, 2,020 miles, with external drop tanks, and it could climb to a service ceiling of 20,000 meters or 65,600 feet. This wasn't just a fighter. It was a high-altitude interceptor, built to meet and destroy threats long before they reached Swedish soil. Its rate of climb was a blistering 175 meters per second, or nearly 35,000 feet per minute. In a scramble situation, the Draken could get from a cold start to high altitude in a matter of minutes. A fighter is only as good as its teeth, and the Draken had plenty of bite. Its primary role was interception, so its weapon systems were tailored for air-to-air -air combat. Initially, the Draken was armed with two 30mm ADEN cannons, one mounted in each wing route. These powerful revolver cannons each carrying around 90 to 100 rounds, were devastating in a dogfight or a close-range pass against a heavy bomber. But the real threat in the jet age came from missiles. The Draken was designed to be a capable missile platform from the outset. Depending on the variant, it could carry a mix of up to four air-to-air -air missiles. Its arsenal included American-made heat seekers like the AIM-9 Sidewinder, a weapon that became the standard for Western Air Forces. For longer-range engagements, it was equipped with radar-guided missiles like the AIM-26 Falcon or the British-made RB-27 and RB-28, which were licensed versions of the American AIM-4 Falcon. This gave the pilot options. They could use the IRST system for a passive lock and a heat-seeking missile for a surprise attack, or use the radar to guide a missile to a target from beyond visual range. In its ground attack role, particularly for the export versions sold to Denmark, the Draken could also carry unguided rockets and bombs, proving its versatility beyond its primary interceptor mission. While the Draken was the quintessential Swedish defender, its impressive capabilities didn't go unnoticed. The Swedish Air Force was the primary operator, flying over 600 Drakens across multiple variants for nearly 40 years. From its introduction in 1960, until the last ones were retired in 1999. But the Dragon also found homes in other European nations. Denmark became a significant operator in 1968, acquiring a total of 51 specially modified Drakens. The Danish versions included fighter attack, reconnaissance, and two-seat trainer variants, and they served faithfully until 1993. Finland, Another neutral nation navigating the complexities of the Cold War also chose the Draken. They initially leased aircraft from Sweden before building their own under license. The Finnish Drakens, designated as the J-35XS, served as frontline interceptors until the year 2000, when they were replaced by the F, divided by A-18 Hornet. The final operator was the Austrian Air Force, which purchased 24 refurbished J-35D models from Sweden in 1985. These aircraft served as Austria's sole air defense interceptors for nearly two decades. 
The last military flight of a Saab 35 Draken took place in Austria in 2005, marking the end of a remarkable 45-year service history. From the Arctic Circle to the Alps, the Dragon left an indelible mark on European air defense. So, what made the Draken so great? And what were its limitations? Its greatest strength was undoubtedly its performance. For its era, a Mach 2 interceptor, with a fantastic rate of climb, was a formidable asset. Its unique double delta wing provided a superb combination of high-speed performance and low-speed handling, allowing it to operate from the dispersed road bases of the Swedish Baz 60 and Baz 90 systems, a huge strategic advantage. Its rugged design and ease of maintenance by conscript crews were also major pluses. And, of course, its incredible maneuverability, including the ability to perform the Cobra, made it a feared opponent in a dogfight. However, the Dragon was not without its flaws. The same complex aerodynamics that gave it its amazing performance also made it unforgiving for inexperienced pilots. The aircraft was prone to a super-stall phenomenon if handled incorrectly, which could be difficult to recover from. Early models also lacked the sophisticated look-down divided by shoot-down radar systems that became common on later third-generation fighters, limiting their effectiveness against low-flying targets. While the cockpit offered decent visibility, it was cramped and ergonomically challenging compared to more modern designs. And while its weapon load was respectable, it couldn't carry the sheer volume of ordnance that larger American contemporaries could. It was a thoroughbred interceptor, highly specialized for its role, which sometimes limited its multi-role capabilities. To truly appreciate the Draken, we have to place it alongside its rivals. In the skies of the Cold War, its main competitors were the Soviet MiG-21, Fishbed, the American F-104 Starfighter, and the French Mirage III. Each was a masterpiece in its own right, but each had a different philosophy. The F-104 Starfighter was a pure speed machine, a missile with a man in it, boasting incredible speed and climb rate, but suffering from poor maneuverability and a high accident rate. The MiG-21 was a small, agile, and mass-produced point defense fighter, excellent in a close-in turning fight, but limited in range and avionics. The Mirage III, much like the Draken, was a successful Delta Wing design known for its reliability and export success. How did the Draken compare? It was arguably the most balanced of the group. It matched the F-104 and MiG-21 for speed, but was significantly more versatile and maneuverable than the Starfighter. While perhaps not as nimble as a Mi G 21 inches a tight turn, its unique wing design gave it excellent handling across a wider range of speeds and altitudes. Against the Mirage 3, the Draken had a slight edge in raw climb performance and its unique short field capabilities. It wasn't necessarily the absolute best in any single category, but its combination of speed, maneuverability, ruggedness, and advanced features for its time made it one of the most complete and formidable packages in the sky. It was the perfect solution for Sweden's unique defensive needs. So, we return to our original question. What makes a 1,950 seconds era jet so special? The Saab 35 Draken wasn't just a collection of metal, wires, and jet fuel. It was a symbol of national identity and a triumph of innovative thinking. It was the answer to the terrifying question of how a small, neutral nation could stand tall in a world of giants. The Draken was the first Western European aircraft to enter service with true supersonic capability. And its design was so ahead of its time that it served for nearly half a century. Its legacy lives on, not just in museum pieces, but in the DNA of the aircraft that followed it, like the Saab 37 Viggen and the modern JAS 39 Gripen. The Dragon proved that ingenuity could be a more powerful weapon than sheer numbers. It was a fighter that could outclimb, outrun, and outthink many of its rivals. A testament to the Swedish engineers who dared to draw a different shape in the sky.
It remains one of the most beautiful and effective combat aircraft ever built. What do you think of the Saab 35 Draken? Is it the coolest looking jet of the Cold War? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed this deep dive into aviation history, make sure to hit that like button, subscribe to the channel, and ring the notification bell so you don't miss our next episode. Thanks for watching.